Today, we're gonna get you on an airplane and take you across the ocean to the Philippines. Hi, Jim Scudder with you. Welcome to In Grace, and today our show is going to be on location in the Philippines. In the Philippines, you see a lot of poverty and a lot of hardship, but you also see a lot of people that God has lifted from the mud and set upon a rock. Sometimes we feel stuck, we feel like we're in the mud, we feel like we're in the miry clay, and we can't get out. The Word of God actually has some words for us in this area. King David was in the clay, he was stuck in the mud, and he said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. We're in the Philippines and we're uh, doing some missions work and we're talking to uh, pastors at conferences and we're trying to encourage. Sometimes you feel like you're one of these rice farmers and you're just out there and you're stuck and you're down to your knees and you can't get out. And you have a question, does God even care? Does God even know my situation? Does he know what I'm going through? And then I have to go back to what David said and say, just have patience. He waited for the Lord and the Lord inclined unto him. In other words, the Lord leaned forward. You kind of hear these motorcycles going by and these three-wheel tricycles, and it's amazing here in the Philippines the amount of people that you can get on these motorcycles. Uh, one church that we are supporting, they use these three-wheeler motorcycle trikes to go out into the villages and bring kids in, and it's awesome to see how many kids can fit. It's like more kids than we can put on a, a school bus in the United States. But these people are going by, and sometimes people are just going through life. They're aimless, they're not even certain what's happening. Uh, or maybe you feel stuck, and maybe you feel like you're in a situation where you can't get out. Well, I hope today on In Grace we can encourage you in this beautiful surrounding as you look around and you see the, the gorgeous beauty of creation. I see uh, God in everything, uh, His handiwork in everything. I see that He is concerned about your situation and mine. Even though he created all that we see around us, he still cares about you so deeply and so intimately. I find that is so incredible. Let me keep going. He says, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit. I think of a, 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 a deep hole and you can't get out of it and you're trying to climb up and it's all wet and you can get no footing and no grasp. And I, I think of even Jesus Christ as he was arrested, the night in which he was betrayed, he was arrested and put into a pit. And I think of the Lord Jesus is, has been in that situation and, and he had to go through this horrible trial and he got out of that by, by being raised from the dead or resurrecting himself. And because he's alive and because we have faith in him, we also can be brought up out of that horrible pit. It seems like we can't get a handhold, but you know what God can do? He can reach down and he can lift you up out of that pit and he can set you on a rock. He can put your feet upon a rock. 
So when we start to see Jesus as the rock and we really start staying close to him, I think it's really going to change our life. It's going to make our life better because the rock is unmovable. We seem to be on shifting sand. We seem to be in that miry clay and in that, that horrible situation. We're not certain if there's any way we can get out of that. But you know what? You can if, if Jesus Christ is the foundation of your life. He's the rock. You've put your trust in him. He can bring you out of that pit and put your feet on the solid rock. I'm not saying we're never going to have a time in our life when we're not uncertain about life and uncertain about the, the circumstances, but I'm just saying this. If you focus your attention on that mountain of God, and I think that's really going to make a big difference in your life. You're not going to be as prone to worry. You're not going to be as prone to doubt. You're going to have great faith and trust in the Lord. And that's what I want for you today here on In Grace, is that you see the big picture. Here you see the big picture of, of beauty, of uh, growing a lot of rice here. And I think sometime in America, we don't really understand how good we have it. I, th I think sometimes we take things for granted and we don't understand that God has given us so much. Maybe if we're focused more on other people, we will be less focused on our little problems in our own lives. And therefore, God will help us get out of that miry clay and put our feet on a rock. About three years ago, there was a really bad super typhoon that hit the Philippines. And Victory and Grace Ministries raised money and we sent money over to some of the graduates at Dayspring Bible College and the money eventually found its way to you, Roger. Pastor Roger, welcome to In Grace. Thank you. And tell me about that day. So the first we experienced uh, the water getting up and then we went to the house of my father, the, the, the front house near the uh, highway. So we were trapped down there at, uh, I think, if I am not mistaken, around seven, seven to eight feet high of water with my uh, family, my mom, my father, and my uh, one brother, one member in the church, my uh, uh, three kids, my wife, my two nephew, and uh, my mother-in-law. Was it still storming out and the water was yes. coming up? Yes. So uh, what happened is we could hardly open the, the door, the front door, because of the debris, you know, uh, pushing the, the, you know, the, uh, some of the, you know, outside, you know, pushing the door. So it's, when you open it, it's um, something you have, you have to pull it on your, your, on your way. So we could hardly open the door. So I said, probably this is, uh, this will be the, the last, yeah. So I was wow. thinking also at the same time to go back and take the back door because it was open. Mm -hmm. But the water is too high. And uh, for my kids at that time, my kid, my younger is one year old. Mm. And I have my five and then and, and that time she was seven. So we could hardly swim if three of them. Uh, and then the rest is, you know, they were also elementary. So uh, I said, if uh, I just remember uh, God that he is the, the God of impossible. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, if you given us the, the, the greatest salvation, I know you can open this door. And after doing that, it was smoothly open. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah, and uh, I, I could not imagine how, how we swim. So my father and my brother was panicking because they were about to take another way and just do their own way and just swim by their own. So I said, no, 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 no. If God opened that door, he could open this gate. So hmm. uh, we, we, we were crying, opening the gate, because uh, uh, there were many things that pushing the, the, the water and then, yeah. the, uh, the, you know, some, some of the cars floating sure. already, uh, the woods. So we were struggling down there. And then uh, the ladies were crying, my mom was crying. I said, instead of crying, why not pray? <laughs> and then uh, the wall of the, the, our fence, the concrete wall, dropped down. Oh. So we were able to, to wow. go out. Wow. And uh, wow. I don't know, uh, probably you would not believe to this, but then we experienced the, the one of the first or second 
uh, high, uh, high wave. So I said, this is the last probably. Mm. I was just thinking this would be the last. But uh, mm. when we were pushed by the water, uh, the post went down and then the wire, we were able to, uh, uh. we were blocked by the wire. And that wire uh, served as, you know, for us to go to the next house yeah. and to climb to the second floor. And that's where you stayed? Yes. And, uh, that's that a miracle, yeah. the whole way yeah. through. You cannot... Uh, and your whole family was okay? Say, yeah, there are uh, 12 of us. Well, God is good, and, yes. and here you are to, to give His praise. Mm -hmm. So when the floodwaters receded and you were able to get some relief in, I know that uh, we had some guys uh, bringing mm -hmm. some supplies. Uh, did you receive some of those, and what did you do? Yeah, uh, the first uh, we received from the group of BMP when mm -hmm. they went after, I think, after a week. Yeah, yeah. we were able to receive some uh, relief goods, including the generators and uh, some cash, of course. And then another week came, then there's some another group. Mm -hmm. And, then, and uh, again, same month, I think, or the following month of that, uh, yes, December, uh, the group of Pastor Matt and Pastor Edwinton went there, uh, helping the church build, you know, giving us the, the GI, you know, some assi cash assistance for, for us to stand our churches once again. And we, th uh, we thank the Lord for, for, for that. And how is everything now? Is it all back to normal or is it still in the process of rebuilding? For me, uh, some uh, in our church, we already had the church that I uh, pastored, and then now I'm starting another work. It's already built. We already were able to build our church, mm -hmm. and uh, some are still construction uh, mm -hmm. under construction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, God bless you, and yes, thank sir. you for sharing your story. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, God is good. God bless you. Thank you, thank Roger. You. Thank you, Pastor. A lot of our programming is trying to show you that there's a lot of pain and suffering in this world, but God is good and we still see God working in the world. But when people ask you the question, why does life hurt? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna answer that? Let me send you my book, Why Life Hurts, Understanding Why God Allows Pain and Suffering in This World. I'd like to send it to you as a thank you for your gift of any size. If your gift can be $35 or more, we're also going to send you an audio series, a series of messages that answer that question, why life hurts. If you can send in a gift of $75 or more, I'd love to send you five more books, Why Life Hurts, so that you can give these out to people that are hurting. For your gift of any amount, we will send you the book, Why Life Hurts. For a gift of $35 or more, we will include the companion teaching series containing the powerful truths of God's demonstrated love through life's difficult times. As a special thank you for your gift of $75 or more, you will also receive five additional copies of Why Life Hurts to share with friends and family. Just call 800-78-GRACE or visit ingrace.tv for more information. Call now, 800-78-GRACE. I'm now with Pastor Nestor. Pastor yes, Nestor, good to meet you. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you. You also went through Yolanda, the big super yes, typhoon. Sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And uh, how bad was the damage to your house or your church? Uh, on that time, in our church, we only uh, rented a place, but it so happened that rented house place had been blown out by the, the wind totally. Blocks. So it was just destroyed yeah. where you meet. But however, you know, my, my place, my home, my house, and uh, it was really uh, collapsed. The roofing area, air, the roofing had been uh, cloned. I said to the Lord, Lord, is it that now our time? But uh, uh, we are gr grateful to the Lord because... He was on our side. Yes. Yeah. And even my two dogs uh, goes with us. Oh. And we transfer the, when we transfer to that place. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, no, it's a, uh, I considered 
a uh, great a uh, great uh, I say uh, challenge in my entire life because I uh, I was raised in Tacloban area Tacloban city uh, the region is a typhoon belt so I used to experience that kind of typhoons but Yolanda when Yolanda came it's it's a big difference yes well I'm glad that uh, that you came out yes sir uh, okay and safe and that God has been able to use you yes. since then to see great things, and that's yes. what God can do. He can take the the devastation and He can make it uh, wonderful, and that's what God's done in our lives, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. And that's what God can do for people. One thing I could say then that to say to thank to to, to say thank to the Lord because after that uh, calamities, uh, after that devastation, after that pains that. Uh, I, you know, I, I considered it, I received, you know, uh, it is really a challenge. But right now, it turned into a blessing. Mm. Uh, uh, the Lord I, has provided us a, a 110 square meter lot. Mm. And then uh, God is able to provide us a light materials for our small church building. Wow, and good. then that's really a, a great blessing good. from Amen. the Lord that we are so grateful. Thanks. Amen. And, uh, We're glad to meet you. Yes, sir. Thank you. God bless you. One of the hard things when you travel to these third world countries is having to see the incredible poverty. The pastor that we were with, Edwin Sampson, took us to one of the slums. This is a place that the people in his church, they go there every week and they minister to people. We started to go in and Within seconds, we had an entourage of children that were hanging on to us. They were so excited to have visitors, to have people that actually cared about them, to have people that actually went in and wanted to help them and wanted to love them. As we walked through, we saw people that were uh, impoverished, people that didn't have anything, and they were literally washing their clothes in, in, in kind of muddy and dirty water. They had open sewers running through the streets. They had hardly anything to eat. They had dozens of people in one small room. It's hard to see, but it's also neat to see how God can lift people from that impoverished situation and lift them out of the mud and set them upon a rock. And anyone who accepts the gift of eternal life, although they might not have anything here, the Bible says that they can be rich in eternity, rich in having rewards and having responsibilities in heaven, streets of gold, Oh, it will be wonderful to see these children who have nothing here, who literally walk around in bare feet and walk through sewage to be walking with white robes on streets of gold. Pablo, glad yeah. to have you on the program in Grace. Amen. And okay. uh, we know that uh, three years ago, Yolanda came through yeah. the super typhoon and Victory in Grace was able to come in and about three weeks later, I know some of the relief went to you and to your ministry. Yes. Uh, so what happened on that day of the hurricane? During that time, although our place was not uh, was, was different from what happened in Tacloban, because really we are also affected, but not so much afflicted, just like Tacloban that it was really devastated. Yeah. Uh, but as far as our place is concerned, there are so many uh, damage great damage also, just like uh, crops, houses, mm -hmm. that even our church building was also totally damaged mm. because of the typhoon Yolanda. And we are so grateful to God that because of the uh, generator that was given by the, the Greece, uh, victory in Greece, we were able to have the communication. Wow, wonderful. Yeah. And that really, it's a, it's a, it's communication's a, a big thing, you know, yeah. just to be able to know what's happening and communicate and tell people you're okay and yeah, ask because for help. Of the electricity. Yeah, yeah, wow. Uh, wow. Well, I'm glad. Yes. I'm glad it got there on time and yes. you're able to use it and uh, be a light to the community. Yeah. Right after the typhoon, we were able to go to Tacloban and visit some of the pastors mm. there in Tacloban. Mm with the relief from yeah. us. From Amen, us. good. Because that time, the, the, there was no yet uh, 
uh, relief from other. So even though you were affected, oh uh, yeah, you still use the opportunity to go help other to people. Go help, Isn't yeah. that just like Christians that, that mm. really believe in the Bible? Because even in the midst of your own hardship, you're still thinking about other people. Yeah, and that's what yes. Christ would want. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you and for the, the 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 victory in Greece. Yes. For all the the help, material material help that extended to us. Amen. It was a great help. Pastor, thank you so much. Thank you. Again. Thank you, sir. What an amazing in grace we've had today in the field here in the Philippines. We're in the town of Iba and the state of Zambales. We're having a pastor's conference. You can kind of hear the strains of the men singing in the background. And we were able to interview some of them and talk to them about where God is leading them to go. And it's so wonderful to know that God is calling people into the mission field because the world is lost, the world is dying, the world needs to hear the gospel. And here in the Philippines, we have a lot of these godly folks that are being called of God and they're going because the message of the gospel will change lives. It will change the destiny of you. And here's my question today. Where will you go when you die? The Bible says that we're all sinners. The Bible says that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says that we are all heading to a lake of fire. That's not a very popular message for television in America today, but I'm not here to be popular. I'm here to tell you what the Bible says. I'm here to, to convince you of what you probably already know in your conscience, that there is a God and we are accountable to him, that he created us and he made us without sin, but we sinned, we fell short of the glory of God. We have uh, disobeyed him. We have a sin nature, we, we sin and that sin has to be punished. God is a holy God, God is righteous and just. He can't just say, don't worry about it, just come on into heaven. But he wants that, he wants us to be restored. He wants us to be reconciled back to him. That is why he sent his son. And that's the greatest showcase of love in the entire universe. These missionaries are gonna go forth from here to share that love in the uttermost parts of the world. And I'm going to share Christ's love with you right now. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How are we saved? How can I be saved from hell? According to the Bible, according to John 3, 16, that I just quoted you, just believe. Believe what? Believe that Jesus, the son of God, died on the cross and paid for your sin. He poured out his blood on Calvary. And if you simply put your simple trust and faith in him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. Let us know today if you've put your faith in Christ. It's a wonderful moment. We'd like to rejoice with you. You can call us or you can contact us. We want to know about your salvation. Or maybe you still have questions. Maybe you have things that, that are heavy on your heart. You just want prayer. We have people that would love to talk to you. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. It's been a wonderful day. I've really enjoyed getting to know these wonderful people that are saying yes to God. And I encourage you to say yes to God. A lot of our programming is trying to show you that there's a lot of pain and suffering in this world, but God is good and we still see God working in the world. But when people ask you the question, why does life hurt? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna answer that? Let me send you my book, Why Life Hurts, understanding why God allows pain and suffering in this world. I'd like to send it to you as a thank you for your gift of any size. If your gift can be $35 or more, we're also going to send you an audio series, a series of messages that answer that question, why life hurts. If you can send in a gift of $75 or more, I'd love to send you five more books, Why Life Hurts, so that you can give these out to people that are hurting. For your gift of any amount, we will send you the book, Why Life Hurts. For a gift of $35 or more, we will include the companion teaching series containing the powerful truths of God's demonstrated love through life's difficult times. As a special thank you for your gift of $75 or more, you will also receive five additional copies of Why Life Hurts to share with friends and family. Just call 800-78-GRACE or visit ingrace.tv for more information. Call now, 800-78-GRACE. Coming up this summer, we're gonna commemorate the 50th anniversary of the lunar landing. 
with a special exclusive interview with astronaut Charlie Duke. Once you left Earth orbit, it had to work. The walk on the moon was really exciting, but the walk on the moon is nothing like the walk with Jesus. We are going to take you on a search for temple treasure. Most scroll scholars would tell you the copper scroll by itself is very boring. It's like reading an old grocery list or an old inventory. It's the grand sum, it's the potential for the holy items that it's pointing to. That's what makes the copper scroll so thrilling. The third location on the copper scroll, it says, 900 talents of polished gold. We are going to take you on an archaeological adventure in Shiloh. The tabernacle was there for hundreds of years, and they're finding more and more and more. When you do an excavation, you get a lot of artifacts, buildings, and all kinds of material, but it's silent. It has to be interpreted and the Bible is your number one source for the history of that area and what took place there. The Bible says that God smote the Syrians and they fled. Well, Sennacherib tells us the same story. That's ancient history right there. The Pentagon represents the mightiest military force in the world. And at 936, we felt a large explosion. It was a life-changing day we should never forget. You definitely want to set your DVR and record every single In Grace episode. Don't miss one of them. And you will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. Thank you for joining us today as we find victory in life through God's abundant grace. I'm inviting you to our 2019 Grace Conference. As we stand firm on the truth of the Word of God, the clarity of the gospel of grace against the new waves of Calvinism, we hope to see you this June. Join us for two days of powerful Bible teaching with over 40 workshops and roundtable forums. Visit graceconference.com today to register. Hi, I'm Jim Scudder, the pastor here at Quentin Road, and the Bible tells us that God is love. Our church is a place where you can experience His love. God has given us His Son, He's demonstrated His love, and we believe that. We've received the love of God, and I believe that's the one thing that's going to really stand out for you when you visit us here at Quentin Road Baptist Church. You're gonna find people that love God, and they care and will love you. So I hope sometime soon you'll come and see all the things that we do from old fashioned Bible preaching and teaching to great kids ministry and a lot of other things that we do around here. We want you to experience God's love at Quentin Road.